Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 15 Good Minutes. This is Coach B. Freddie, how you doing, man? Doing well, and you? Doing good. Yeah, how are you, man? Doing good, man. You know I'm hanging in there, uh, getting getting ready for the big game. That's it. That's kind of what we're going to do today. It's going to be all things Super Bowl. Um, I think CBS is hosting. And what they did was they put together, they pulled a bunch of different, you know, the all those brain trusts, all those cats that think they're smarter than we are, and got their breakdowns and did a nice consolidation. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently than we did it last year. I'm going to, there were nine areas that they, they would break down and then they, they would say, for example, Kansas City wins this, San Francisco wins that. I'm going to tell you what those are. And then you're just going to tell me you agree, you disagree, you know what I mean, with those. And then once we get through that, I'll get your predictions for winners. But first, I want, I want to start off with, um, with, 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 I think the most important part of the Super Bowl is, you know, what are you guys eating, man? Who's grilling? What's the, what's to talk to me about the menu of the day, you know, <laughs> over at these residences, man? I mean, y'all up for this? Start with you, Freddie. You the grill master out here, man. What's mm-hmm. what's going on? What's happening in, in Dallas on on uh, Super Bowl Sunday? I don't know what's going on in Dallas, but I know what's going going to be going on in my house, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna throw on some sliders. Um, I've already already purchased them. Do some wings. Normally, I would have like nachos, but I was gonna say, you know, I mean, the nachos is a staple over there. Are we giving yeah. up on that in 24? What's up? No, nah, I'm taking it easy. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things that it, it might be too much. And I just want to, you know, keep it simple. All right. So over to you, JR. Are you, are you cooking number one? And, and, and if so, what? If I do cook, decide to cook and it's not too cold, I plan on cooking. I have some ribs and I might have the wife make some turkey chili. And just with some some carrots or some uh, carrots and celery, you know, just something quick like that. I'm not too much on the creamy, the creamy dips. I just usually take Italian dressing and whip it up there and just eat it. So I mean, okay, so that's that's not in the chili. Then I couldn't tell if you. No, 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 no. It's not in the chili. That's okay, just on the okay. side. I got yeah. you. I got you. I got you. So I mean, you're pretty close. I mean, ribs is something that I mean commands an awful lot of thought and preparation. When we, when's the go no go on this rib decision, man? Saturday. Oh wow! <laughs> Day before. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying I'll cook it the day before. I don't want to be cooking on the day. No, I'm saying, are you... Yeah, I'm just trying to say, you sound like you was on the fence about whether you were or you weren't going to. Well, I I might just settle for the turkey chili with some... uh, Carrots. Carrots and stuff, and usually get some... uh, uh, What's that? Late July chips. I might dip it with some of those, you know what I'm saying? That's it. But I'd like to get the the chili because... I mean, I'm sorry, the reds, because I, I bought them and they've been in there, and I'd like to, you know... Try to rotate the uh, the freezer. Yeah, we're gonna have a a show in the future about the way Jr. buys food and that that thing that looks like a a Foot Locker, uh, <laughs> you know, with, with meat from twenty twenty two and his rotation schedule. We, we'll get into all of that because um, I do find that quite interesting <laughs> as somebody oh, who basically freezes nothing and I don't do leftovers. Um, for me, it's pretty simple, man. It's gonna be wings and chips. Um, couple cold ones, right? Um, that's that's kind of how how I like to roll with it. It's it's worked for me every year. Um, I see no no reason to change that. Um, I thought about uh, ribs, though, t- truthfully, Jr. But I said yeah. uh, it, it just takes too much. It too takes much. a lot. Hey, man, ready. they cook themselves, man. You you, you season them up. It right. takes time. Yeah, time is the, is the issue. Yeah, and the game it, for me, it comes on at what five thirty my time. Nah. Cause see, I still gotta take a shower after I'm done with the grill. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I gotta be done cooking and everything by four forty-five, five o'clock. Give me time to get get my shower and you know. That's why I'm doing mine on Saturday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But see that, and again, for me, I just you know, if you do it on Saturday, that means we're reheating on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm right. just you know. But I mean, do what you got to do. So, so go on. I'm, let me piggyback on Freddie's thought. The next question I have for you guys was, um, how do you how do you watch it? Where do you watch it? And how much, if any, of the pregame coverage do you do? Start with you, Freddie. I'm thinking um, this year I may do it upstairs. Um, outside of my man cave, in my man cave, I have a 70 inch that I only use that for my PlayStation and, and watching games, right? 
you know, that, that, you know, the wife is not allowed to go up there and watch what she wants to watch. I mean, she could watch what I'm watching, but she's not allowed to go up there and start fidgeting with, with the, with the no, nah, that's not what you do. No fidgeting. And, you know, and then outside of the man cave, I, I don't know, it's like a, it's almost like a loft area to yeah. where I have, I don't know what they call it or whatever, but we have another sofa there and there's a 60 inch there. So I may watch it there just to use that furniture a little bit more. That's all. Uh, as opposed to watch. We call that. That's what we call first world problems. Um, So, so <laughs> over to you, JR. Um, how do you watch? How do you watch it? And where will you watch it Um, at your spot? Oh, well, I mean, I watch it. Um, I, Most likely how I watch it is, I have a kitchen, a television in the kitchen, the 70 inch in the living room, and I have a, a smaller television in the bedroom, and I have my iPad on. I don't watch any of the pregame. I just wait for the for the game to start. And uh, and generally, if 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 the wife isn't watching anything, it's on all of those because I move from moon. You know how my house is not really that big, you know. So you uh, don't settle in to your spot and just ride yeah, it out. You you move. I be moving around. You know what? I'm, I just I just can't. Most times I can't just sit and not do anything. If I if I know that I have to do something, I'll just watch the game from room to room. And but I you know how big my house is. I can be in a room like that, you know. So uh that that's basically basically how I watch. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm I have a my my PlayStation set Freddie doubles as my sports set. It's not not 70 inches. <laughs> it's I want to say it's 65. It's uh it's where the recliners are. It's it's the sports room. That's kind of where I watch it from. I don't do any of the pregame. Um, I, I mean, it's it's. I know that every network and every um, analyst known to men, they, this this is their week. You you know, yeah. I be trying to skip through sports center now during the week just to catch my basketball, but they keep throwing Super Bowl stuff at me. It's it's and it's going to get you know more and more and more as we get to Sunday. So. Um, that's, that's kind of how, you know, how I like to do it. Um, I just, I don't see a whole lot of sense in watching a bunch of different people tell me who they think are going to win. Cause at the end of the day, I want to see the game. Unlike JR yeah. though, I do, I, I reach a point probably, oh, I'm about an hour before, similar to Freddie. I'm done for the day with all this other stuff. I do like to see the game. Um, so once I settle in, I'm going to be in that spot. I have a, um, next to the recliner. I have my um my laptop up and you know I'm looking at some sports sites and stuff like that while I'm following following the game. So um so 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 with that we can we can we can jump in this. These are nine quick areas. I, what I want you to do is I'm going to tell you what's what uh what uh what's his name? Jared Dublin. I'm sorry, Jared Dubin um for CBS Sports. He put this together. I think it's pretty cool the way he did it. It's it's basically an edge. I'm going to give you categories, and I'm going to tell you who they say has the edge, and you tell me agree or disagree. That's that's really all I need from you guys, right? So he starts off with the quarterback, and he gives an edge to the Chiefs. Freddie, agree, disagree? I agree. Gr, what about you? Same here. I agree. I, I, Quarterbacks, I, I think that's for me. For me, I agree. Next up is um, running backs. Uh, they gave the edge to San Francisco. JR, agree, disagree? Agree. I agree. Ready? I have to agree. Yeah. I agree too. Um, McCaffrey has been, I don't know. He's been McCaffrey. We talked about this before, Freddie. Remember a couple years ago in the um in the fantasy league about what when he can be healthy. You know what kind of what kind of a player he is, and this is the healthiest that I've seen him. So good for him. Next category is wide receivers, um, and uh, they're giving this one to the 49ers. Freddie, agree or disagree? Is it wide receivers or wide receivers and tight ends? Or just just wide. Receivers? Right now, it's wide receivers. I'm going to come back to tight ends. I would go. Uh, I would go uh, San Francisco. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Debo fooled everybody. Yes, I, I go with San Francisco. <laughs> All right. I mean, you know, Debo Samuel, Samuel and Ayuk. It's a, it's a, yep. it's a it's a it's a good it's a good pair. Um, now to your point, Freddie. I'll start with you. Tight end. They give that to the Chiefs. Agree or disagree? I disagree. I disagree as well. Gerald, what about yep. you? I think Kelsey. Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, 
So you do agree? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yes. I disagree. I think that um, I think um, Kittle has had a better year. I think that uh, with the exception of the last few weeks, you know, Kelsey's Kelsey's there, but um, I, I'm going I'm going with Kittle on it. Um, I mean, it's it's close. I, it, to me, it, it's close. But the only reason why I would even consider Kelsey is because Kelsey is the number one option. He's the number one receiver, right? right? He's the number one exactly. receiver, right? Exactly. As opposed to Kittle, you got Debo, Ayu, McCaffrey, yes. and then exactly. you got Juszczyk. But oh, oh, if, they, if they decide to feature Kittles as much as San Fran, oh, and dude, Kansas, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. On um, paper, man, those, those guys are the beast on paper. Well, uh, no, I'm just saying, for example, Kittle um, was named first team all pro. Uh huh. Kelsey was not. Yeah. So, that's that's on performance. That's not on paper. Um, and again, they, they got to play it on Sunday. But um, yeah, I play the game. I like Kittle. Offensive line. Start with you, Jr. They give it to the Chiefs. You agree or disagree? Yes, I give it to the Chiefs. Freddie, you agree? Or no, disagree? I, I, I know that's shaky, but they they give they give Mahomes can only do what he can do with with, with his line, giving him protection. So I agree. I agree with but, the Chiefs. I'm going with San Fran. I'm going with San Fran too. Um, okay. I think that uh, Trent Williams to me is just it, c- it could be a it could be a wash, but uh, yeah, I, I got to go with San Fran on that. Um, next up, defensive line. Start with you, Freddie. They give that to the 49ers. Defensive line. You agree? Or disagree? I definitely agree. Jr. Yep. You agreeing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um I'll give I'll go with them as well. JR, we're we gonna go with linebackers. They give that to the 49ers. Agree or disagree? I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh Kansas City's got uh, they got good good linebackers, but they're not as good as San Francisco's. I, like I said before, on paper, San Francisco is the is the beast in this on paper. But the, but they gotta play the game. But you're picking San Francisco's linebacker. Yes, I'm picking their linebackers. Yes, but Freddie, I agree, disagree. Let me give away my other answer. I think it's a push, and That's a great I, answer. Great I, I answer. think it's a push because while San Francisco has the more noticeable linebackers, Fred Warner, Greenlaw, but um, I forget what is it, Gay and the yeah. other in, in the system in which they use those Willie guys, Gay and, and Nick I, Bolton. And, and and it's another guy. Um, I forget. Yeah, Leo Ch- Chanel. Chanel. No, no, it, it's it's a, it's a white guy. I forget his name. Not Drew. Yes, Drew Tranquil. Drew, Drew Tranquil. Tranquil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they're, they're very good. effective with what it is they do. It's just they don't. They're not the household names. But if you watch them, they're very effective and very active. Defensive backs, Jr. They go with the Chiefs. You agree or disagree? No, I disagree. I agree. Uh, San Francisco secondary has been trash. I, I mean, they have been trash. Last area, Freddie. Um, specialists. They give that to the Chiefs. I agree. You are you go with the Chiefs on specialists, or are you going with San Francisco? Yeah. Uh, I'm going with the Chiefs. I, I, yeah. Last section. I'll start with you, Jr. Um, who wins it and why? I know San Francisco is like good on paper, but I still think. You can't bet against Mahomes. I'm I'm going with Mahomes. Uh, I I think I know that San Francisco has more weapons than they do, but I just think that Mahomes knows how to win these games, and I, you just can't count them out. I, I I don't know if that that's a good enough answer, but well, it's not about good or not good. Well, it just sounds I'm like just saying, I'm just you're saying. putting it on he, Patrick's he shoulders. Might, yeah, well, I'm putting it on Patrick's team shoulders. Well, you just mentioned Patrick, Patrick, and well, then Patrick. Well, I'm, well, if you, if you're weighing it out, yeah, he is quarterback. It's either so, Purdy or, or I think that ca- that that Mahomes could carry his team better than Purdy can carry his team for in this particular game. So that's why I say I, I just think think he's going to do his thing. Brady, who wins and why? I'm rolling with San Francisco. Um, I think to Jr.'s point, Patrick Mahomes has to carry the team. Brock Purdy does not have to carry the team. 
You either hand it off, throw it to Kittles, throw it to Ayuk, or Debo. That that's Patrick Mahomes doesn't have that luxury, right? Um, but I think um with the San Francisco defensive line and those two tackles for um Kansas City, I think it's Jawan Johnson and um Donovan Smith, formerly of the Bucks last year. He's trash. They get away with a lot of holding, and they're not going to be able to do that against Chase Young and Nick Bolsa. And you got Eric Armstead and Hargrove coming up the middle with Ken Law. Um, those guys. I, I, I heard about about Chase really not playing, but is that is that did anybody hear anything about that? Not I playing. What there was benching. Okay, all right. I just I was I was listening to some radio station and heard that. So, um, I'm I'm going with San Francisco for a couple of reasons. I think they're the better team. And slightly different than you, Jr. I, I think it's more than just on paper. I mean, I, I think that I think KC is is you know I'm, I mean they got here, they got here, they got here, but uh, they had a lot of help along the way. There's some games that I thought that they definitely were losing, and other people gave it to them again. Not knocking KC's sides, but most mm-hmm. importantly, I think it's just like you said, Patrick, 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 and Patrick. So. I don't think one guy is going to be able to win it. I like the O line. Um, I like the protection. That protection that Brock God allowed him to run, and I think that overall San Francisco has the better defense. I will say that San Fran won't be able to get get down like they were down to Detroit, but this team against that team, I I I, I think that KC is relying on fifteen to do everything for them. Um, and I, I don't think he's going to be able to carry him, but I'm hoping that it's a it's a good game. So last game of the season, real quickly, Jay, what what grade would you give the NFL overall this season? I think I think a a, a B a B plus, and and uh, my reasoning is is because how they are cutting up how you can watch a game. You, you know right. what I'm saying that the mm-hmm. networks are different the different sell offs to to who gets the games and it those people I, I will like. Those people are selling them to services. So you might get this one. You might not get that one, at least when you stream. You know what I'm saying? So that's my biggest pet peeve. I think this season I ordered three channels that I didn't have to order before. I give them a D minus for all those reasons JR listed, right? Everybody don't have Peacock, which is really NBC. That's all it is, yes. You know, so to me... I felt like you were using, you know, what you what you know, you know, America's sports addiction to to, to line your pocket. So to me, you get a D minus. Not, and I came close to really giving them an F with all this Taylor Swift coverage and, and, and everything. <laughs> that was too much. Um, I don't have anything against Taylor Swift. I honestly, if a song came on right now. I would not know if it's Taylor Swift or not. I really, I've never heard one of her songs, but to me, her coverage, it was just too much. I had a, I had a D pretty much for a combination of what you guys said. I start off every season with a C, right? I used to do an A and you had to earn. Now I get, I'm give you average. And then I need you to go up or go down. Um, and I think that they did use some, you know, like, like twist another wrist to get people to go to Peacock. And I'm not doing it. At some point in time, I think they're going to, they're going to X out certain types of fans like, you know, like myself. So um, hopefully this will be a, be a good game. And maybe, just, maybe they'll do better. Let me, next let me year. just, let me just uh, change this real quick. I, I'm going to give them a B minus almost a C. Oh, because I want to throw refer, refereeing in that, in that, in that as well. Either way, they're happy that with you. Terrible. You kept them in the B, in the B. That, is, that is all the reason why they should get a Lord. Right. Money. That officiating was, whoo. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, so and I didn't even add that in. Right. Before we check out, let me see if the guys have anything to say. JR, you got something to say today? Yeah, I got something to say. It's it's sort of a sort of a beating a dead horse. Uh you know, a couple of few days ago, they uh stole Jackie Robinson's statue, cut it off the off his uh left his shoes, cut off his at his ankles almost. They found it burnt. And uh, you know, they MLB said they would replace it. But I like to ask everyone who's following, you know, what is it that African-Americans or people of color have done in this country 
that they deserve so much hatred. You know, so and I, I just ask that because this country, we can, we can't we're not going to make it if we can't get along. And, you know, I know that that's uh, uh what's my man, my man who got uh, Rodney King. Can we just get along? Uh, our country is is in turmoil right now, in a turmoil. We've got uh, terrorists that lives among us and claim to be uh, one thing, you know, uh, patriots and, and all other kind of things. But they're really not, you know, and I, I think that this country needs to take a real good look at it and look at your own thought process because everyone's an individual. You know, each one of us are different people of color. We act different just like anyone else. We're not monolithic. You know, I think that uh, we just need to all really pay serious attention to that and how we teach our children. Because the only reason why racism exists is because people teach it. And you can't erase history. So why not just learn it and understand it and not repeat it? That's all I got to say. Fair enough. Appreciate that. Freddie, you got something to say today? I don't need to try to follow that up. Fair enough. Um, I got something to say, but Freddie kind of said it. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it a little differently. I am tired of Taylor Swift there, right? Um, I, I, I think that, and again, I'm not I'm not hating, but it's 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 ridiculous to to to, to Freddie's point. Um, and we, you know, we don't show the significant others of other people who are playing the game and playing it just as hard. I always felt the same way about Jerry Jones, too. You play a game at AT&T Stadium. Every time they do something good, you get to see the Joneses up in the booth with the family and the grandkids and whatnot. But then when they're not, you know, he, he you know, you don't see him. And who cares? Right. You got to look at somebody like Robert Kraft. We didn't show him every time that Tom Brady did something because you know why? He's a winner. He expects to be a winner. So I'm OK with whoever, you know, Travis Kelsey dates or doesn't date. But I think it sends the wrong message. And then the justification that I'm hearing, like, oh, she's she's now the conduit for little girls to like football. Bullshit. Right. Yeah. If you need if you need Taylor Swift to be your envoy for your child to learn NFL, you got problems. So let's not just, let's not sugarcoat it and color it something that it isn't. They're doing it because she's famous and because, you know, it sells commercial time and all that other kind of stuff. But if you're not going to show, and I'm just going to, I don't know who Lamar Jackson's dating, but if you ain't showing Lamar's significant other or other people's, we got to stop doing this, in my opinion. So my, I got something to say is Taylor Swift might be one hell of an entertainer. I know she's a time magazine's person of the year, but I'm tired of seeing her at NFL games. And I know every game, I know that Freddie, there's an over under right now of how many times we're going to see her on Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think the over under is, is 10, right. That, I mean, that's literally a betting line in Vegas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just throwing big money. Is, is you going to see her on screen with CBS more than 10 times or less than 10 times? So you I mean I, during the game or just overall during the game? I, I'm I'm gonna keep track of that. I'm uh, yeah. during the game. Yeah, yeah, right. That's insane to me. So that's that's my I got something to say, and that will be all we'll say about that. Um, last thing before we check out, good good luck to um all the 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 people in the organizations, right? The all the folks that we never get to see behind the scenes that that work for you know San Francisco, that work for Kansas City, the staffs, the admin, the travel people. Um, it takes a whole lot to to run it you know, an NFL team or any pro team, but to do what they've had to do the last two weeks is um, is quite impressive. And hats off to all those people that you never get to see. So enjoy uh, Super Bowl 58. Um, we will check in with you guys next week. We're out. <laughs>